Hello, my name is Simon Pomeroy. I'm the owner of a company called Palatrax, a bait and tackle company from the UK. We've come across to Ribomania here, this fantastic show, with my colleagues at Cartmaster who are now wholesaling Palatrax exclusively throughout Poland. Um, show's fantastic, so we're having a great time and it's great to see how our fellow anglers, the Polish anglers here, have really embraced what Palatrax stands for. Now my history is basically owning my own lakes and I initially started Palatrax off because basically I wanted to have a really high quality bait that not was only good for angling but also good for the fish, good for the substrate life, good for the water quality. So it was a very holistic approach where we were able to monitor baits that were great for catching fish but also great for feeding fish. So it was a fishery management tool initially and it exploded from there when people realised how many fish we were catching on baits that were very, very high quality. Moving from there we started looking at the tackle ranges and we really, really kind of really identified with various areas. And one of the main things about carp fishing that really kind of frustrated me was in all other areas fishing, fishing is all about being very um, unobtrusive. A lot of the tackle now on the market for carp is you know, big leg core leaders, big leads, things like that. So off the back of that, I developed the stone system, which is really, really scaling down everything to get more bites and ultimately catch more fish. So we got rid of a lot of the things, and the main thing we got rid of was the lead. The largest piece of terminal tackle, we basically started using stones, natural stones, which we could use as a method feeder, use as a general weight. They're porous, so they'll take on a flavor. Instead of it just being a weight that ultimately was a disadvantage because the fish, it's not about the fish seeing it, it's about the fish actually sensing it. And they can't sense a stone as a negative, whereas a lead, you just think if you take a lead out of a lake, nothing lives on the le a lead. You put a stone in the lake and growth will actually happen. So nature's very much aware it's a man-made toxin, it's not it's not a problem that you, uh, not a product that you can just dismiss by painting it green and saying the fish won't see it. So off the back of that, we developed the stone system. The stone, a very short rig. We use very, very sharp personal hooks, whether it's the grips, whether it's our own standard barbed or barbers version. We use a lot of method mixes, high quality method mixes, but we also really embrace the natural elements. There's boilies and pellets on the market and flavours and colours and things like that. But we must never forget, fish predominantly live and eat on natural food sources, from crayfish, from mollusks, from daphnia, from waterfly. There is literally thousands of different species of natural food source that for some reason the carp industry is almost ignored in favour of, well, flavoured baits. So we're lucky, we have the fortunate element of actually being able to embrace naturals, combine it with modern baits, or, you know, literally, literally be very, very flexible with our bait. You know, we, we won't just go and fish with one bait for a whole season like some carp anglers do. If you did that in any other area of fishing, a fly angler wouldn't go fishing with one fly. A match angler wouldn't just fish on a maggot. There's all these variations which can help you catch more fish. And that's really what Palatrax stands for, is literally we're looking for little edges here, there and everywhere that will all stack up to catch a small fish. So we've got a very holistic approach to the environment. You know, as ambassadors to fishing, we really should look after the areas and the environment we're fishing within. But also as massively passionate anglers, we want to be fishing on the best, the best baits, the best and the most effective rigs. And obviously the stones, which is a very big part of our attack and our armory. Combine all those things and you actually end up with a very, very effective system, very easy to use. And in all honesty, our fame to fame is that we do catch more fish than many other companies. It's not a sales ploy, it's nothing like that. We're anglers, we go out to catch lots. And hopefully the Polish environment and the Polish anglers will embrace what we do and at the very least appreciate it. it's just another tactical approach. If you want to fish on lead and lead core and things like that, that's a tactical approach. But it's only a singular tactical approach. We have always looked for other tactics and that really what Palatrax stands for. It's a tactical approach with flexibility, 
embracing elements of the naturals which are very much ignored which I think is actually pretty crazy when you study fish and see really what they eat in the environment and, and that's really what we are. We're all about catching fish, we're just like yourselves, we're just anglers and we hope that you embrace some of our tactics and some of our products because I genuinely believe they will help you catch more fish. So the standard rig that most carp anglers use nowadays is very similar to this. So you've got a large lead, a lead clip and a tubing or lead core. Now the trouble with that is we know that fish have the ability to sense, they've got massive sense and to say that they can't sense it or see it just because we've painted it or we've camouflaged it actually doesn't fit in with true nature. So what we've done as I said earlier is we still stay with the hair rig, we use very short hair rigs but we're actually using stones, natural stones to do the same job. Now the fact is, carp and other fish just cannot sense that. So whilst everybody around us may well be fishing with a tactic with lead core and leads, in essence all we're actually fishing with is the rig. Because the stone is just a stone and the fish don't have the ability to detect it within their natural environment. So that's the main core thing about the stone, is it's undetectable to a fish. So fish that can be unwary and stay away from man-made, you haven't got a problem here, all you're going to be fishing with is a very effective rig. So it's a really easy system. And you can either have a running, or you can have it fixed. You can have a pendant stone, which is similar to in style of a swivel lead, but obviously, again, the core of that is just a natural stone. You can flavour it, you can use it as a method feeder, you can actually leave it in the lakes you're fishing and it'll grow with algae and have life growing on it. So it just becomes and blends in with the background. So that's the first part of the stone system. Now, we have loads of little tactics that we use and we add. If I show you the first thing, now, we actually don't just fish with round baits. This is a squab, a pillow-shaped bait that we've been fishing for many, many years now. Some companies are now actually copying it and saying they brought it to the market, Well, the truth is we've been doing this for 15 years plus. Now, so why do we fish with something like that that's not round? Now, in my factory, and I have all the machines, the factory and the machines are designed to make round baits because it's the easiest and most commercially viable shape to make. That's not a reason just to fish with it. So therefore, we looked at it and thought, <laughs> trouble is with round baits, they're smooth. When the fish eject them, there's nothing to hold them back in the water. They shoot through the water. So having a shape that, to be quite honest, is A, different from what everybody else is fishing around you, but also a shape that has four corners, which when the fish try to spit it out, it oscillates throughout the water. So in other words, it shimmers through the water. And by doing that, we're looking for that extra percentage of holding back into the mouth and therefore we all know that unfortunately the hair rig is not the most consistent system so we're trying to make it more consistent. And then we'll actually look at, we call it flaring. How is a fish going to find that bait? So we need to find a way of getting like a flare, making the fish aware that the, 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 the bait and everything is in position so it can actually find it. So we'll use a whole host of different things, but we've got a different tilt to many other companies. Now this is one of our glugs. Now the trouble is with most glugs nowadays, they go and they wash off very quickly, and that's no good. I want it to carry on working within the swim and staying within the swim, using it as a true advantage. So as you can see here, I can hold this glug up, and it is literally like glue, a real syrupy, and all of our baits are very, very, the ingredients, the core ingredients are very high quality. We've got to be, you know, we're putting them in the environment, in the ecosystem. So if I was just to put that glug in, you get a little bit sticky, but it washes off. And I say, it's all human grey. So if I'm to draw that out, you'll see how it almost like toppy apple effect. So that literally stays around that bait. Now that's not just all, it's flavoured, it's very potent, but we'll use other products. One of my favourite one is Waterfly. And these from the naturals range, again saying that fish eat so many naturals. So all we do is we then literally 
cover. So the glug then allows all the naturals to adhere it, whether it's maggots, daphne or whatever. And the vice just pushes into the water. So what you'll have is you'll have all the tiny little water flies, which is a massive part of their natural diet, just coming out into the water as the glug slowly breaks down. And when it does break down, if I try and prove the point a little bit more, if you look at how this goes in, and it doesn't just dissolve and dissipate in the water, it actually stays in the water. You can put a whole PVA bag full of this stuff in, and it'll take as long as it takes to break down. So it's there, it's sending out that flare, it's sending out that signal. So we're combining potent flavors with baits that are shaped for a reason, and we're also using the natural elements that I say so many people ignore. If you think like baits like maggots and worms, I'm getting on in a few years now, but when we were kids, you know, a lot of this stuff didn't exist. But the things that did exist and still exist today and still have, you know, it's almost like some people think they're broken, but maggot still has to be the most effective bait that all fish eat. And all fish eat naturals. And I say, carp now are getting so big, they're feeding on crayfish, they're feeding on a whole host of things. Don't be misguided into thinking that they're just getting big because they're eating pellets and boilies. That is not the truth. You go all around the world and you'll see huge carp that never see a human, <coughs> never see an angler's bait. So just think a little bit outside the box, or should I say go back inside the box and realise that naturals is a big part. And with that, we'll literally take this. This is, this is a hydra brown snail. Now, it is literally solid. Okay? Now, if you immerse the hydra in water, it'll suck all the water back in, and you can even flavor and dye it. So it goes back to its, in this case, I flavored this with jungle, with a tiger nut and peanut flavor, but also I've dyed it red. And so it goes back to a really big shape, its original shape, very rubbery, great to hair rig. And so what you're doing is you've got the base of the snail, which is 60% of its natural protein, and we've got the ability to either use it just as naked as it was na natural made it, so without flavoring or dyeing. But we know flavors, we know colors work, so here we have the balance, you can do either. So it's a, it's a bait that, it just works. And to be quite honest, it's, everything within its DNA is part of a fish's natural diet. So think away, you don't just have to fish from the boilie, think of that the fish will be attracted to this because it's part of its natural diet. Now, I think the biggest thing for me to explain, and I've written a feature for you guys, is basically the stone system and its core element. So if we go back to literally a simple stone. Now, method fishing was without a shadow of a doubt, in my personal opinion, the most effective way of catching fish. In the UK, many fisheries now actually ban the method on match fisheries because it is so effective. And if you're using a really high quality method mix, which we do, obviously, and we make all our stuff in our own factory. We don't buy it in or you know, do anything like that. Because to be quite honest, I'm no different than you. I'm just an angler with a bit of an active mind. I love developing. I love trying to find ways to catch more fish. So that's the standard tactic. But what we'll do is we'll get our method mix and we'll actually add all the different kind of natural elements to it. So we'll add maggot, we'll add gamma shrimp, we'll add daphne, we'll add waterfly. Waterfly, in the UK, there's over 4,000 species of water wall fly. It's not just bloodworm, there's rakes of different flies and it'll be the same in Poland and any other country throughout the world. So all that goes in with our method mix and we add it. And then it's so easy, because what you end up with, you end up with right next to your hook bait, a food source food source that combines naturals. So all we're going to do is take that method mix, the stone, one of the reasons I actually developed the stone was because I wanted something to carry in my method mix, which wasn't as obtrusive as the modern feeder, all plastic and lead and shiny and man-made. Stone, just part of it. And so you can literally, and it's great, it just adheres to the surface of the stone, the method mix. And you can literally cast this as far as you can cast. Obviously, use a rod that's 
beefy enough. And so, like I say, you can cast it, you can boat it out, you can do whatever. If you just actually zoom back in onto our mix down here, you'll see how the glug has just sat round. But what we'll do is we'll push this in and you'll see the natural elements, especially because there's an air content, they'll actually start to break that method mix up. So even in the coldest waters, you can actually get your method mix to break down and break down naturally. Great big lumps as you can see, so it's going up and down. It's making your swim work for you. It's getting fish to react to all the different attractants, whether they're the man-made, the fish meals, the naturals, it's all part of the whole thing. And if you can get those fish to come in, even like, you know, people say to me, oh, we've got smaller fish. I want smaller fish to come in. I want them to signal to other things that something's happening in my swim. And hey-ho, along come Mr. Carp. And that's what obviously so many of us are aiming for. And this will just carry on breaking down. The more naturals you put in it, because of the air content within the naturals, the more it can break down. And a great example is to show you how much air is in this. All I'm going to do is get a bit of method again, and I'm going to put gamma of shrimp into it. I was showing some people earlier, and they just, because I actually bore this in like this when I'm fishing on the surface in the summer. So all I've done here is overloaded this in essence with gamma of shrimp. Put it in, it floats. So I can ball in a food source that's actually going to go from the top down. So many people just are thinking bottom up. No, 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 I want to fish, bring fish into my swim up and down in the water column, feeding on those bits of naturals, feeding on all the goodness in that ground bait. We do two really, really efficient method mix, carp crush, which is full of seeds and fish meals and things like that. In this case, the bloodworm one, which has got bloodworm, maggot, milk proteins. So very diverse baits. We really are, like I say, going back to some of the basics of angling from years gone by, really kind of developing them in tandem with modern bait and modern tactics. And I say, I don't want it to sound contrived. I'm just an angler. At the end of the day, all we're doing and all Palatrax stands for is trying to catch more fish. And we're, we're basically believe that you can't just stop and say, that's it. That's the future of catching carp. That doesn't mean, just because people are saying that is, that it has to actually stop there. We haven't stopped there. We've moved on, we've moved forward. And hand on heart, if you embrace the tactical approach we do, or just incorporate it with your own tactics, you'll be no different than us. Your catch and your catch rate will improve. I can promise you that's genuine.